My name's Corey Langford. This is my build. This is the um, Rebel Space Station StarCraft testing facility. So just like all of my builds, I really like to do something Star Wars inspired, but I also don't want to do something that you've seen in the movies. I like to build something that nobody's seen before and it's something that may be in that universe, but not necessarily in that particular movie. So what we can do is we'll start here and then we'll work our way around and I'll kind of show you and give you kind of a tour of it. Sounds good, so let's dive into this section here. So this section right here is one of the three bays that holds the ships. So each one of them has a bay door that opens up and inside of it is all the different fighters. There's a bomber, there's a fighter, and then there's a small fighter. And each one of them has a tunnel that comes across and the tunnel that's a walkway on the top and on the bottom, you can kind of see it in there, there's a rail system with one of the Lego roller coaster tracks. And the idea is, is that it brings across the um, pilots into the, into the main um, hangar area so that they can do. But all the custom, all the bombers are custom, all the fighters are custom. I just wanted to do something that, that didn't use any sets. So you're gonna kind of see a lot of just original pieces in there. And then the smaller tunnels are what would be for docking. So you would have shit, large ships fly up and they would dock to these docking rings that you're seeing. And then inside of those, are tun uh, the tunnels are um, people that would just be kind of walking towards the ships and would be as part of, as part of the crew and part of um, people going in and out of the space station. Then um, this particular piece is one of the, uh, is the engine to the whole facility. So this particular engine, I really like to use the, um, this is a part usage that I really liked, which was the Lego um, basketball arena set. And the, um, the white ones are from like a Lego snowboarding X game set. I've had them for years and I've never used them. So I was like, I really wanted to use them on something. So this came in really handy to do the engine, but all of these pieces open up as well. To reveal the inside. And on the inside, you have all the different, um, like the power station on the bottom are some of the Lego X-Pods as kind of shield generators. And also another piece that I've had for years that a lot of people have never figured out a way to use are these Lego fiber optics. So I was able to finally use those old fiber optics from like 1994 or something and be able to use them into this to kind of do something for like what may be the hyperdrive. Those pod pieces are great for space builders. I've seen other builders use those. Those are so perfect for building things like that. Yeah, I really like those pieces and um, hopefully figure out a way to stick a light in them um, and maybe make them light up tonight during our, our night event. So that's my plan for that. And then kind of keep and continue around. We have another docking ring. So in all, you have four major, um, four major tunnels and then the four minor tunnels. And so each one of them is, is kind of built really similar, maybe a little difference on the people that are in them, but for the most part, they're the same. And then um, rolling around to the next big hub. Oh, and, and along the way, we, I have I've kind of I built too much too much maintenance craft and too many fighters. Um, so I've actually kind of had those displayed out as well. That this would be the craft that would that would serve the the um, space station in its maintenance, repair, garbage disposal, whatever you can imagine. These are some fantastic, they're smaller builds, but lots of good detail. Even the colors you use and everything stand out there. Yeah, I wanted something that if you put them in the space station, they're not, you know, the, the knee-jerk reaction is to build something the same color as the station. Because you're like, I want it to be like the station. But what I found is, is that when you do that, it blends in really badly. So what I did is I wanted to build something green and yellow and dark green and, and something that when you put it inside the station, that everything kind of stood out there. And then the, um, some of these recon fighters that I made, um, one interesting part usage on the exhaust, I used the Lego hot dog bun <laughs> <laughs> just to try to have something that was kind of neat, a neat little piece usage and all on that. Um, they all fold up. And then again, in this one, we'll open up this bay door. And inside of it, we have the next we have one of the recon fighters getting ready to take off. So they have the droids and the repair ships and all inside of it, repairing it, getting ready for flight. So that's one of those tunnels. And then we'll make our way along to the next one. Again, another one of the small ones with people and all in it with the docking rings. And these are my other new fighter. This fighter right here is kind of like, I kind of wanted something that was small, like the A-wing that would be really fast, really agile. And these are kind of what I came up with. One of the things that I'm most proud of on this one is that I was able to get a landing gear on it so that it actually folds up and becomes more um, flat, but making it so that it had a landing gear on it as well. A great sleek looking design there. Uh, yeah, I was challenged with that. Somebody, um, my son actually told me, he said, he goes, man, he goes, this is great. He goes, but you, he can't just flop over in the front, it looks like it's wrecked. 
And I was like, I know. And he was like, you got to figure out a way to put a landing foot on it. So after a while of messing with it and playing with it, I finally figured it out. And it, I think it turned out okay. And then again, we have this over here. We have the those particular, those, those fighters inside of the bay. So all of those fighters are inside the bay. And I actually put a few more of those in there since um, and kind of built the walkway different in this particular hub so that you could be able to see um, on top and on top of that and have the walkway visible. And then finally over there is a um, kind of a Millennium Falcon-esque type freighter that um, would, would be something that would serve the station, whether bringing supplies or troops in and out. That's kind of what it, its primary purpose would be. It would be to get people in and out, but just something that was kind of matching. And that was actually the first thing I built. And I actually built that years ago and just recolor schemed it so that it would kind of match the station itself. So this is such a magnificent build. The scale of this build is just crazy. Do you know, like, part count or general size of these different sections? So part count is yes. Um, I have no idea how much are in it. Somebody asked me the other day, said, if somebody comes and asks you, do you know the answer? I said, no. They said, just say more than five. And I said, okay, that'll work. And, um, but when it comes to the actual scale, it's right at about 12 feet in, um, in diameter. Um, when I started building it, I actually didn't get to, to actually see it fully built until about a week ago. Um, and I actually had to pull out our cars from the garage and build it in the garage on folding tables so that I'd have the chance to be able to see it fully built before I came here, um, which I'm glad I did. That was a learning experience of how you know it best came together. And then one thing I didn't take into consideration, it has about, um, I think it's 18 or 20 USB cords running into that middle hub over there right under the main tower. But um, in it, I, I was, it's, the problem was is how do you get to it? And so I actually had to leave one of the small tunnels off so that I could get all the, the USBs plugged in. And then I was able to hook that last, that last tunnel in and it was done. But um, an Easter egg on that middle hub, that red orb that you see, inside of that red orb, um, you'll find Princess Leia, C-3PO, and R2-D2. It's kind of an Easter egg <laughs> drop inside of it. So is that USB you were talking about? Is that what runs all these lights? Because you've got lights running all the way out in these tunnels. Yeah, so um, I have the USB cords, and there's some Lego lights, whether it be light-up blocks or light-up um, bricks. There's some lights that are um, just different different usage of, of, of a lot of different light kits. And then they all run out in the bottom, and I have um, five external batteries running it all. And we'll see how long they last. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the operation here. Another thing that stands out when you first come up to this build is the color scheme. So it's largely you know, blue and white with some gray in there. How did you decide on that color, and was it difficult to acquire those parts? So what I wanted to do is, is the last build that I did, which y'all featured a few years ago, we had um, a really tall space station that we did, and it was red, white, and blue, and gray. And so what I wanted to do this time was do something that complemented it. So I did white, blue, gray, and dark gray. So that um, my plan is, is to display this one and the really tall one together at some shows. So I really wanted to land on that. But really and truly, the thing that started me down the path of blue were the, was the engine and using those, um, that part, that NBA arena part because they only make them in white and blue, and the white ones are, very, are actually a lot harder to find. So that's what set me on the path to use blue. That makes sense. Another thing that stands out is all of the window pieces here. So you've got like straight ones for the, the bay areas here, and then the tunnels have the rounded parts. Uh, are those easy to acquire in this quantity? So um, a few years ago, they released some sets that had them in it, and so I bought them directly from Lego. You know, I was lucky in that in the fact that that they were there, and also through Lugbolt, um, they had some curved light of, of those as well. So I was able to acquire them. And I'll be honest with you, when I acquired them, I like I knew that I would use them for something. I just didn't know that it would be this. And um, and I, I thought I have more of these than I will ever need. And I actually only have one left, one singular window left after this build. So it came in quite perfect on, on that, that I was able to do it. I was getting a little nervous that I wouldn't have enough, but it, it worked out. Sometimes the planning actually works like you want it to. <laughs> yeah, not always, but yeah, it's, it worked in this case. And then um, on the ends of the tunnels, the small tunnels, I used um, the pods and, the, and that part that you see, that escape droid part, that's that white and blue painted piece that's printed on there and um, I had a few of those but of course I had to acquire those over several different brick link orders to be able to get them in the quantity that I wanted but just wanted that little pop of blue color at the end so using those really worked out well for that as well. 
with all of the clear windows throughout this build, is there still pretty good structure when you're moving this to a show? Do things tend to stay together pretty decent? It, it does. There's um, one or two parts that, that probably the middle hub where everything hooks together that I probably will rethink when I get back and probably put a little bit more structural integrity inside of it. But the tunnels themselves and the ends especially, the ends where all the fighters are, they stay together really surprisingly well. I'll put it that way because I thought we were going to have a disaster on our hand when we got here. But they actually stayed together really, really well. But it's the, it's that middle hub that's the, that's the catch because you're plugging everything into it and you're pushing in. So when you're pushing in, it wants to try to break apart. So that building a little more structural integrity in that will be really good. Yeah. Well, it's certainly a fantastic build. It's very eye-catching here. I love all the lights, all the, the ships that you made for and everything, and the whole story you're telling. So thank you so much for giving us a tour of the base. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys.